set, set off your mic, uh, your page. of 32 Degrees of Type 1 Radio Lounge. It is 4 o'clock in the p.m., and how does everyone like my Donnie Gilson impression? Uh-huh. <laughs> if only he was actually listening. But he's been a busy man. We are live on the air, are we not? Yes. I'd also like to give a shout-out to my friend uh, Taylor, who is listening right now. Um, she is I am Darkness Taylor on DeviantArt.com. Go check out her art; it is pretty cool. Today's guest is Kevin, and he's going to be talking about his kick-ass, wicked, awesome, freaking combustion engine—the type that we should have that doesn't guzzle gas—and uh, his ideas of how he plans to get it out there and whatever else he wants to say. Hello there, I'm Kevin. And Hello there. Have, Tell uh, us a bit about uh, what, what you got going on. I've invented a, an engine that uh, is a two-cycle engine that does not burn two-cycle oil. And with a computer on the uh, intake and exhaust, it also will sip gasoline at uh, a much lower rate than any current engine. I have a lot of echo in the system right now. Really? Uh, I'm not hearing any echo... Um, obviously, this is Dave, Time Warrior, and we have Jay Larson, we have Kevin, and I do believe uh, Reset is on the line with us, is he not? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Reset. All right, cool. Everybody hear me talking here. a few seconds ago. Um, yeah, um, Reset's obviously not your given name. I think your given name is Please Be Kind, Rewind. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I figured it uh, You know, that's are, are what I thought. Are we still getting a... Are we still getting an echo somewhere? Yeah, I am not hearing echo. any sort of an echo. I'm so, not hearing it. I, I'm not either. What I'm, is what I'm getting at? I'm not hearing it either. It's Basically. about. I'm getting it at about half the volume. Um, okay. That's probably yeah. because you got an open page on the internet to the radio site, and it's echoing uh, from the page. Okay. Let me shut Most that. Most likely, up. yeah, yeah, that would be a good idea. It's kind of like when we when you tell people, okay. Don't much call better. into the show and listen at the same time. It's pretty much standard protocol. <laughs> All right. It's off. The Classic mistake in a new 21st century sort of way. I'm still uh, interested in tubes, okay? so. Ah, okay. You're still <laughs> old school. I'm a throwback. Uh, so uh, why didn't anybody throw you back then? I'm too heavy. Um, okay. Too much McDonald's, huh? Yeah, a little bit. I gave up on McDonald's, though. I, I found out what it was all about. I, I'd love to give up on Monsanto, but they're just all up in our face, aren't they? They are. But uh, it's... All you got to do is go buy organic. And, well, they, they sure do make us go to the 3D PC lab, don't they? Yeah. They're yeah. terrible. Jay, you still there? 
Yes, I'm still here. Okay. Well, um, if your your nice little fan isn't still going, you might want to, you know, kind of click in and, and join us here. Um, as far as all, all the engineer and, you know, all, all those sorts of fields, um, Kevin and Jay are our two um, resident uh, techies when it comes to things of the electromagnetic and the motorized and electrical, whereas I'm more of a, a computer tech. So, obviously, there's a difference between the two. Well, I'm going to be needing a computer tech, obviously. Uh, <laughs> Well, I know a thing or two about putting a motor together, but I don't know how to make that emission control work. Well, I, um, I don't either. <laughs> well, I can uh, give you the flow chart and uh, timing, and uh, after that... After that what? I'm not a programmer. Ah, just a techie. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll find one. Yeah, um, I'll see if I can dig up a programmer for you. No promises, though. Everybody seems to be incredibly busy these days. <laughs> yeah, there's a local so, college around here. I can I can uh, see if I can find one. Mm -hmm. So okay, um, your engine is just fuel efficient. It's not perpetual energy, so that means the nope. Illuminati won't won't be wanting to hunt you down and, and kill you. No, the oil so company. That's, that's always a. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, I, but the cut, but the four cycle. But the car companies will love you. The people that drive the cars would love me best. Uh, right, yeah, right well, now the, 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 that hybrids out there that run about sixty miles to the gallon, and it's pretty good, and not not too bad. But I'm still not impressed. I'm talking about uh, eighty two yeah. miles to the gallon in a hybrid. Yeah. So um, I, actually, even though the people will love it, I think the car companies will love it more because they're the ones selling the cars and making the millions of dollars. So oh, yes. anything, any, anything that makes them money, they're just, you know. Yep, the people that buy the cars make the money. Remember that. They save the money. <laughs> the people that buy the cars make the car companies the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we got to get the technology out to them, let them know that this thing exists, and they're going to ask the car companies, hey, can we get one of these new Zabo cycle engines? And the car company is going to say, what? what? And they're going to do a little bit of research, they're going to find me. Next thing you know, I'm going to be building motors. That's awesome. one of the ways to do it. The other way yeah, is to uh, find an angel I backer. In ah, Greek tech. but not in the outfield. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> no angels in the outfield. Nope. <laughs> yeah, I know um, uh, the other day you and Jay were also, while we were all kind of um, bouncing ideas back and forth about how to make things even more efficient with your engine, but obviously uh, one step at a time. We we yes. had some devious ideas that we're not about to go into at the moment, obviously. Right. For, Throw a little so baby got, steps and baby steps, and eventually uh, the entire paradigm is shifted. Yeah, but just a little bit at a time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, it, we're, we're paradigm shitting. I mean shifting. <laughs> shifts all nobody the time. Nobody notices a millimeter on the baseline. <laughs> so God damn, when I got that much shift, I take fiber con, I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so um, you know, um, Rome wasn't built in a day, and as a, an old client of mine used to say, let's not put the buggy before the horse. So it's obviously one step at a time. Um, I know you said you said you have access to machine shop and all that. So how how you doing on a physical prototype? I haven't got a physical prototype yet, but I've got ninety percent of the actual physical blueprints done. Okay, I do the I did the. Um, there's several stages of the blueprints, the scratches, uh, the the theory behind it. And then we got um, the concept, which is what I'm going to be sending to the patent office when I file my utility patent. I've already got a... Um, utility patent? Oh, it sounds like I feed something I feed to my fish. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? The, yeah. the uh, provisional patent is the one that reserves my spot for a year before I actually file a utility patent. And when I when I send it to the patent office, it's going to be worded in such a way that it covers the concept 
in any configuration. Yeah, so that nobody can can hijack you and, and shut you down, just like right. um, a lot of these other engines and things. You know, and people try to get it out onto the market, and then the competitors yep. don't don't like that. So then they're they doing buy it out so precise, and they're doing it so exact. They're doing it l with legalese that puts everything covers every millimeter of the machine. Well, mine covers the whole machine as a concept rather than every little tiny part. So yeah. When it gets patented, it's going to be 100% mine. Yeah, that way it's a CYA, mm -hmm. cover your ass. Yep. By being vague, I'm covering everything. Okay, so on on average here like for a regular let's say a, a regular non-hybrid car, which is what okay. most people have. Um on average, about how many gallons of fuel do you think this will save people in a month? All right. Let's uh, go with something that we already know about. Chevy 350, very common motor, very, very reliable, very powerful. It's so powerful that they use them in small block races. Um, I've had a few, as a matter of fact, and I'd go back to them if I could. Um but here we have a 575-pound hunk of cast iron, and it's usually put inside of a, a car that totals out at about 3,250, 3,500 pounds. It's basically um, the Chevy Brontosaurus rolling on four wheels. <laughs> and you're going to get about 20 to 22 miles to the gallon on that one, right? Now let's just change the motor. Cut the weight down. Figure, cut the motor itself down to 300 pounds. Make it out of aluminum, cut it down even more, 250. Cut the number of cylinders down to four. Keep the power output the same. But here's the catch. By increase, by in, Decreasing the weight itself, that in itself will give about seven more miles to the gallon. Makes sense. That doesn't 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 make doesn't make sense to just go that far. Obviously. Let's double that. Let's let's double that. Forty miles to the gallon to forty five miles to the gallon in that big Chevy Brontosaurus. <laughs> and you get tire power tire burning power to, to play with too. So, uh, what what is what is your engine doing differently in ter in terms that the average uh, non automotive tech can understand? And approximately, how many gallons within a month on average are people going to be saving? As far as people who you know do the usual to and from work thing around and about, that you know that's. Well, let's start with the easy stuff. It's going to save them about uh, half the fuel they already spent. So, if they spend fifty dollars a week on gas, they're going to spend twenty five. Um, they might drive more, so that doesn't count much, but, uh, what we got here, my engine is a two-cycle engine. That means that when the piston comes up to the top, the spark plug fires every time and there is an ignition. My engine is also fuel-injected, supercharged, and computer-controlled from stem to stern. From the moment the air hits the the first part of the intake until it, it goes out to the tailpipe. If there's a little bit of a difference in where, what the engine parameters should be, the computer corrects it and adjusts the level of uh, gasoline or, for that matter, any sort of fuel required to keep the efficiency up and power up as well. This reminds me of something. A couple of weeks ago... I'm I'm at a loss for all the details. Jay can refresh my memory. Um, I think Jay was telling me something about that a concept for a, a boosting engine efficiency by having the piston work in reverse. What was that about, Jay? No, that was I was telling you about uh, um, what's what called uh, 
uh, uh, using a um, Joe cell, um, and basically what it does, the spark fires and it creates a vacuum and it sucks the piston. It it don't use any fuel. Um, so it, it it sucks it up instead of pushing it down. Right, um, but uh, what I was thinking about, uh, mo most two cycle engines are efficient because they just have uh, two strokes. Now um, we know that's what she said. We know that <laughs> you, two things that really optimize the engine and gas displacement: larger piston and less pistons. Um, you, you, if you had a, a two cycle yeah engine, let, let, let's let's not get all piston for no reason no uh, if you had a <laughs> two cycle uh, we're so punny a two cycle engine with just two pistons would be more efficient wouldn't it not technically but uh, you're only producing power um, on half the stroke unless unless you make it uh, uh, unless you make it uh, much like the old flathead engines. A two-cycle is a flathead. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need any overhead valves or anything uh, fancy like that. No, wh what I mean is uh, that the pistons are uh, horizontal. No, it uh, doesn't matter which way you point the piston. Mm -hmm. One, One's underneath, one's above. Horizontally opposed? Right. Now here's a problem with a two-stroke. If you put a horizontally opposed piston on a two-stroke, you're limited to two cylinders. Well, Jay's concept, to the best of my understanding, is that instead of using regular fuel, a, a Joe cell, although I don't know much about what a mm -hmm. Joe cell is, but a Joe cell would create a vacuum sucking the piston up instead of injecting fuel into a chamber and igniting it. So the vacuum would suck the piston up, and then, of course, gravity would drop the piston down, and then the vacuum would suck it up again, and then down, and you'd have the same sort of motion, but without using um, gasoline fuel. As for exactly what a, a Joe cell is, Jay knows more about that than I do. No, what I was saying, though, all you need would be two pistons, because uh, you lose a certain amount of efficiency by having small pistons. The larger the piston the more power and the more economy in in a way. So if you had uh, opposed pistons like that, but you made them larger, it would be a whole lot more efficient than, say, just a regular two, normal two-cycle engine. How does that you sound? Wouldn't get much, you wouldn't get much power out of a two-cylinder as opposed to a four-cylinder. Um, the simple fact is, when you've got four cylinders, you've got uh, four points on a crankshaft that's actually producing power instead of two. Mm. That's the big difference. Hey, and on this... That's why you got eight, 16 cylinders, uh, the the big nine-cylinder radial engines. You got uh, those pistons coming down nine times a revolution, and it's producing lots of power that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, regardless of how the engine is, is designed, um, what, what sounds cool is not using liquid fuel and having the piston sucked up and gravity drop it down instead of having the chamber um, filled with fuel and, and ignited in that way. So I'm just looking for clarification on what exactly a Joe cell is and how it creates it works, that. It works off of orgorn energy. It transfers it to the air, and when, when the air goes into the cylinder, spark ignites it, and it creates a vacuum. Okay. Um, Kevin, are you familiar with Oregon Energy? Uh, nope. <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it, was, it was discovered by Dr. Wilhelm Reich, and it was a serious threat to the oil companies, and they completely ruined him. Well, well the Oregon Energy, uh, the one, the inventor of the Joe cells from Australia, and it's been around since about uh, 1980s or 90s. Yeah, but I'm just saying the discoverer of Oregon Energy got completely ruined by the by the oil companies, and they set this guy up to take a bunch of falls, and they tried to to burn his research to the light of day. But thankfully, copies of most of his books were saved somehow, 
and um, since then they've been um, reproduced and republished and that data wasn't lost, thank God, but or they really screwed him good because he basically came up with a gasoline replacement because there is, for lack of a better way of explaining it, there's, there's crap loads of this electromagnetic energy, if you want to call it that, in the atmosphere itself. And what this technology is able to do is extract that energy from the air and be able to use it. And that's what Mr. Reich figured out. And the oil companies went, oh, no, you don't. Uh, that might be why we can't use zero-point energy yet. That's got exactly. an awful lot of promise. We don't know how to use it yet, but uh, that's... Oh, actually, that's been invented... Re re time. <laughs> well, that's been invented, reinvented, re reinvented a zillion times over. That probably happens 10 to 15 times a year. They just like to suppress these technologies. Because, I do agree that a lot of technologies are suppressed, but uh, also... And these technologies are falling into the hands of the wrong people, called the public. And yeah, exactly. anybody smart enough to, to run a soldering iron can put some of these things together. They're working on it. <laughs> yeah, that is true if you got the brains for it. If you understand, uh, understand the physics of it and you know how to put the components together, then sure. But... You know, it's just unfortunately the um, you know the um, the oil in this world is um, a bunch of people's two hundred trillion dollar piggy bank, and it's how they they have their power to control the masses. So um, it's good that things are slowly leaking out, though. I mean, even things just like yeah. solar and wind energy put a serious dampener on the oil companies, and um, it's happening because. The, the Illuminati are starting to fight with each other. I mean, the original plan a long time ago was for all these different families to remain united, but, and, you know, to consolidate power to the top of the pyramid, so to speak, and remain united and, and rule the masses. But they've gotten greedier and greedier and greedier, so they've been going to each other and stabbing each other in the back. I mean, it's the classic, you know, villains aligning themselves temporarily and then, like, you know, screwing each other over when, you know, when, when one sees an opportunity, one will screw another over. So you've got... Without a, without G a thought. Yeah, so, so, like, GE, they're on board with um, wind power, solar power, thing, things like that. And they used to be on board with the oil companies until they went, oh, wait a minute. If we go in the other direction, we can have a monopoly over the oil companies. We can absorb them and take them out, and now we can be dominant. Because right now we're not dominant. They are, so we want to shift that we around. Have numbers. Yeah, and it has nothing to do with, with them caring about the earth. What it has to do is how many millions of dollars a second these people can make. Exactly. It has a positive um, side effect for the environment, but that's not their main motivation. Their main motivation is the um, the, the, the the green the green dead presidents. <laughs> yeah, the, the moldy dead presidents. You know, they, if they were taken out of the circuit for a little while, um, a lot of things might come out of the the woodwork. <laughs> for example, my engine. Yeah. People might get interested in it and uh, back me with it. And tell me, here, here's a machine shop. Go ahead and have as much fun as you want. All the metals in the back. Uh, here's a computer. Order whatever parts you want. And I'll sit down and do it. And I'll have it done in less than three months if I have that that, that sort of opportunity. Hey, does well, that work? Know, does that ahead. work anything like a diesel um, two-stroke motor where you have a blower on the side and scavenger ports inside for the air? I suppose you could run diesel in it. If you have a, there's a, basically a two different internal combustion engines, um, both of the kinds with pistons anyway. The the kind that burn diesel and just about any other kind of fuel, and the kind that burn gasoline. Um, gasoline does not like to run at very high compression, which is why uh, you're going to see car motors right around the uh, eight to ten to one compression ratio. Whereas diesels, they, they crank it up there. Um, there's diesels that have 22 to 1 compression ratios, and that's an awful lot of uh, energy to, to deal oh, yeah. with. Yeah, 
I used to work on um, MEPS generators in the Marine Corps, and hmm. the types of engines they used were four-cylinder diesels that had a blower on the side to suck air in to feed the scavenger ports. Yeah, a turbocharger run by the exhaust. Right. Yep. You can. I, I suppose we can use one of those. See, mine has to be supercharged. It See, it doesn't burn oil. So it has to somehow manage to keep the cylinder, uh, the keep the piston rings isolated from the atmosphere. And in doing that, the only way to do it is to put positive pressure into the cylinder on the intake. I it has to overcome whatever pressure is in there on the downstroke. Well, we've got some seriously powerful superchargers and turbochargers these days. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, by the way, have you ever heard of uh, Trilla Steel Drum Corporation? Or you might have you might have seen one of their trucks rolling by on the highway. Mm. Probably seen a bunch of the trucks, but I don't remember the name. All right. Well, Lester Trilla, he's a multi-billionaire. Um, he owns this corporation, produces most of the steel drums, period. I mean, for mm. steel drums to store anything. And, um, you know, a long time back, I um, actually had a friend who, who knew the guy and, you know, got to hang out with him a little bit one day and got a tour of the plant. And he's very creative, very innovative, um, very artistic. Um, he doesn't have his head up his ass. He doesn't think he's better than anyone else. And... You know, he he always loves it when, you know, people run, you know, new ideas across his, his desk, so to speak. And um, he's right here in Chicago. Um, we could try to, um, to hook up with him and, and see if he's uh, willing to hear you out. I mean, I can't make any promises. It's just it's a thought that crossed my mind because, um, you know, it. he just he, he seemed like a really cool guy. And he's just willing to talk to anybody. He, he doesn't think he's better than everybody else. He's just, you know... Good. He's just a really cool guy. So, um, you know, um, I don't know how busy he is or what's going on or whatever, but um, I could attempt to get back in contact with him. I mean, my God, it's been forever. But man's got a good memory. He'll probably remember me. And, um, you know, I'll just say, hey, I've got a, got, got a friend who um, has designed a really efficient um, gasoline engine and he'd like to run the idea by you and see what you think about it and we could see what he says and go from there um you know like i said i don't know how easy it's going to be to to hook up with him at this point but you know we could give it a go and see if things align and you know if he's willing to have the conversation with you then cool well here's the good part i want to make this engine obsolete within 20 years Electrics are up and coming, but you still have to have a plug kicking around somewhere to put them in. Yeah, that you do. Yep. Or an energy store. And I've got a vision as far as what the uh, filling station of the future would be. After having uh, changed the battery on numerous forklifts and other industrial lift trucks, standardization. All car batteries that are electric shall be the same. And this will do what? You pull into the filling station, you sit your car down on the on the filler, hydraulics, pull the battery out, and put a new one in. You pay for the recharge, pay for the time there, and get on your way. Take just as much time to fill up a car as it does to change a battery in a forklift. And with a machine doing it, it would be even quicker. Yep, you just sit there, $10 or so, whatever it costs to recharge the battery, and there it is. Interesting. So you have um, a universal plug, like, you know, you might say, like if you can, you know, compare it to... Um, 
SATA2 or USB or whatever, obviously it's standards exactly. for compatibility. Exactly. A 400 volt battery, switch it out with a 400 volt battery is the same thing. Yeah, it sounds like your engine would do really good in a hybrid setup. Oh yeah, you put a uh, 40 mile to the gallon uh, Chevy and make it into a hybrid. Yeah, and diesel diesel and engines can can run biofuel. So if your engine isn't going to mm -hmm. be picky about what it takes, then I mean, you know, you could use frickin', um, you know, for fermented uh, uh, fermented grape wine, you know, like 200 percent proof, or you could use um, the, um, the the cooked vegetable oil, like um, you know, yep. the the for biofuel and the diesel and things like that. For my prototype, I'm going to build a mild gasoline engine. It's something that I can put on a mini bike or something and just ride around to prove that it works. Oh, yeah. You know, I've been thinking about making a motor-assisted bike because you don't need a license. You don't need insurance. You don't need any of that um, for that, at least um, not a, a, that I've ever heard in any state because it's motor-assisted. The law says you need all that crap if it's motor-dependent. But if it's motor assisted, you can still use the vehicle when the motor's disengaged, then you don't need to register it and all all that mm, sort of stuff. I've seen a few of those. Yeah, I mean, if people go onto YouTube and they they check out my channel, um, one of, well, one of my channels, but um, Pondscape, P O N D S C A P E, like landscape at Pondscape, they browse mm -hmm. my videos. Um, there's a video in there that says um, eco-friendly um, motor assisted bicycle because my neighbor has one of these things and I got out there you know with my camera and we were talking about it and I was showing the bike and then I have video of him like riding off and engaging the engine and it's pretty sweet it gets about um, 150 miles to the gallon and um, can do about a top speed of uh, 40 miles an hour and it's pretty slick and one of these days I freaking want one I got a mountain bike I could put it on and you know I just got to find the time with you know all this other stuff I've been doing but that's really one of the things I, I want to do <clears throat> as soon as I can because I don't drive because it's too expensive among other things but I like riding my bike and if you could take the idea of a bike in a car and put it together and you don't need a license don't need insurance don't need to pay for stickers and plates and, and blah 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 <laughs> blah then yeah. you know that is like so I mean 150 miles to the gallon and okay, so you can't take it on the expressway, so what? I mean... You can't ride a bike on an expressway anyway. Yeah, j j just use the main roads. Yeah. And, you know, it'll it'll get you there. Plus, then you could you can weave in and out of traffic without it being illegal when you disengage the <laughs> engine. Go, go on the sidewalk, you know, whatever. Rush hour traffic, if you got an area that's blocked up, you disengage the engine, you go manual, you hit the sidewalks, you move around the traffic blockage to where it's oh, clear, do that all go the back time. into the street, re-engage the engine, and boom, you're back off again. Love it. I do that all the time. Do you have a motor assist? Nope. Some you people get a swear I do. No, some people swear I have motor assist. Uh, I go that fast. Ah, uh, so we got like an 18 speed bike or something? Yeah, 21 speed. Uh, oh, shit. Specialized. Mine's an, eight. Mine's an 18. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, an old specialized that uh, I've rigged up to 21 speeds. Wow. It doesn't have much for a top end, but it sure does have good takeoff. Wow. How, bike. Um, how many miles per hour can have you gotten that, that sucker up to? Um. When I had the older gears on it, I topped out at 37, just pumping on straight level ground. Uh, I was in Iowa, I got pulled over for speeding. <laughs> he didn't give me a speeding ticket because I didn't have a speedometer. Well, you're not in a motor vehicle, so he can't give you a ticket anyway if you're just Exactly. Out. Well, he could, but... Uh, but the judge would throw it, it out. It's like, yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like, wait a minute, you're giving someone on a bike a speeding ticket, and you go in, and you know, even if, even if you know you really were doing the speed, you know, you just you still you go in and you and you say, look, this this is a mountain bike, not a car, so there's no way I could have been going that fast, and it's not a motor vehicle, so you do, you can't even really legally ticket me because um, you can only ticket on motor vehicles. Um, this vehicle has no motor unless my legs count. 
which they don't by law. No, they don't. And, and, and the judge... They can get be, off and walk, and that's not a motor. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the judge would just be wanting to punch that cop in the face. The cop would just be embarrassing <laughs> himself. Yeah. Pretty much. But all the interesting technologies that are coming out, and I like how, how a lot of the newer technologies are grassroots technologies. Technologies to where, you know, if you can't build it yourself, there's probably some Joe Blow down the street who can. And, you know, get your you can get your parts at the junkyard, the local radio shack, whatever. And there's a lot of grassroots technologies coming out that, you know, replace the stuff that is inefficient and that normally you have to pay crap loads of money for. And it's just encouraging people to, to become more independent. And it's just you can do a lot now without needing to be a, a freaking rocket scientist or have a million dollars. Well, I think what we should do is start out with uh, changing these uh, big, monstrous, inefficient four-cylinder engines into much smaller two-cycle engines that don't burn the oil. Um, control the uh, ignition and all the emissions by computer. Everything about the engine be controlled by computer so that uh, it will be efficient. It will get the most out of every drop of gas that you just scored into this thing. And, of course, uh, the higher compression versions would run diesel, biodiesel, alcohol. Um, name a couple of flammable gases, maybe. Um, all at once. Mix the fuel. Natural <laughs> gas. Natural gas, yes. Or hydrogen. I don't, I don't know, know about hydrogen. hydrogen. It's, it's really, really hard, hard to produce hydrogen. Oh, use it in brown gas which is an electrolysis type unit that they, you can actually have aboard the car. And here's the thing about uh, hydrogen. It takes more energy to take a hydrogen atom away from a water molecule than it does to put one in. No, it don't. Um, yeah, I've, I've looked it up. That's why we have hydrogen in combination with everything on this planet. You, you can break up hydrogen and oxygen from water by put, making a tube putting it in between a magnetic field and the oxygen gas will come off on one side and the hydrogen gas will come off on the other side. And it's the magnetic field that's breaking it up. I wouldn't want to be near something that strong. <laughs> really? So how strong, is, how strong is it, Jay? How much energy would you need to put in to do that? Well, what they're using is just a regular horseshoe magnet. And they have a tube that has a split in the middle that's filled with water with um, and the split it splits off on two sides where one side is getting oxygen coming out and the I other gotta side see the blueprints on that monster my brother-in-law was talking about that he saw something about it on YouTube himself yeah uh, Bedini was showing it in a, in a video Maybe, so just um, a, just a magnet, a, you know, a cheap, a highly excited. Magnet. Well, they're about a thirty dollar. Maybe magnet some highly nowadays. excited steam, well, maybe. As far as uh, and besides, see if you've done it water vapor. Uh, well, hey Jay, you're doing the whirlwind thing again. It's getting hard to hear everybody. <laughs> um, there's an other ways of doing it. Uh, they can they can crack. Uh, water with less voltage than it takes uh, that than what you get when you put it um, together, believe it or not. That I've got to see. I still need some links so, to that. Okay. Question, they, Jay. Yeah. Question. Um, do you have to keep charging up the magnet or just a regular horseshoe magnet just it's, as it is? As it is, it will break, break the stuff down. So after, you know, it's like, so after 10 years, you're not going to get these magnets just suddenly not able to do it anymore. No, because what happens is water molecules bump into each other. They have a certain amount of energy. Okay, a lot of times when they bounce into each other, part of the molecule breaks off, but usually it creates an ion. And the ion, there's a certain amount of ionization going on all the time. All the magnetic field does is pull the ion to one side or the other, and as the ion reaches the surface, it, com it can't combine with the water. What it does is combine with another oxygen molecule or hydrogen molecule, 
becomes a gas, and it and it flows up and out. So basically, you have the oxygen coming off of one pipe, the hydrogen going out the other, mm-hmm. and and you would feed your your hydrogen in, into your pistons and ignite that, and then one would imagine that the exhaust that comes out of that is going to be pure hydrogen. And if you put that back together with the oxygen again in just the right way, you've got water coming out your tailpipe. Right. I want to see how that's done. I want to build one. Okay. Uh, uh, after the show, I'll, I'll send you a link to the video. Okay. And you can watch it from there to get an idea of the concept. Now, um, another thing you can do is once... Once it becomes a gas, you can mix them and send it right into the engine. You just well, yeah, that's what you do. You produce energy from what you crack from electricity. Yeah. But you gotta you gotta keep them separate until they form a gas. See, because water molecules are vibrating, and they cause a disassociation. When the uh, the disassociation happens, in fact, you could probably put salts salts in there to make the ionization of the water even more prevalent or act um, more efficiently. Well, you know what? That's interesting because if you were to put in this type of, of magnet system in with your existing engine, then what you, you'd have is an engine that can, can burn water, can burn gasoline, can burn pretty much frickin' just about any liquid that you want to put in the cylinder. Mm-hmm. In, in fact, to create extra hydrogen ions, all you'd have to do is put a little battery acid in, in with the water, and it'd probably be more efficient because it would create more disassociation. And if once there's disassociation, the magnets go pull it to one side or the other, depending what is disassociated. Because if this can be done, I'll invest in a couple of nice little uh, neodymium magnets and see what I can do with it. Well, what they're using is regular horseshoe magnets. I just read something here. Um, it's an Ehrenhaft discovery. discovery. And uh, uh, what we got, got is... A magnet lost 10% strength, strength over, over 24, 24 hours. Hmm. I got an echo again, and I'm not sure why. It went away. No, it didn't. I'm I'm actually hearing the echo now. Skype does that sometimes, and then it just goes yeah. away. Yeah. Yeah, Skype will do that, but uh, it's uh, Professor Ehrenhaft, and it is uh, searchable on Xquick. Well, you know, you know what, um, you know what you could do to bring the magnet life back up, if you have it, like an extra extra gear coming off of the transmission or something. Obviously, things that turn are able to produce electricity. So, if you got something coming off the trans back up that turns a little mini a little mini engine, that'll actually create more electricity to then recharge the um, the electromagnet again, so that you're not um, losing strength. Although your, yeah, electric that, that charger could pro- your electrocharger could probably do that anyway because you're pretty much saying that your engine's going to require having an electrocharger for efficiency anyway. So you could probably run something off of that to keep the, keep the magnet constantly charged. Something like that might just work. But uh, yeah. the thing is, I, I still don't know of any way to crack hydrogen and oxygen from water with just magnetism because water is only well, slightly the only, aromagnetic. The only way to find out is, is screw with it because Jay's just telling you something, yeah. you know, what he saw and worked into and the only real way to really find out is uh, try it. Well, you got to remember, yeah. water as a molecule, they're not cracking it because there's a certain amount of disassociation. Once you have the disassociation, the magnetic field pulls the ions to one side or the other because you've got an electrical charge. An electrical charge follows the magnetic field. That's how it works. 
So a crack is a push force, and what you're talking about is a pull force. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what the magnet does is just separate the ions to one side or the other. A water ion is uh, only got an extra or lack of an electron. Mm, well, it does a little bit more of that. It, it pulls uh, hydrogen off as easy. It adds a hydrogen mo molecule, making H H three uh, O and uh, O H. And but the thing is, when they get to the ions to the perspective field. They're still vibrating. What happens is that the OH releases the oxygen, becomes H2O underneath, and the oxygen um, goes up the tube. And on the H3O, uh, the hydrogen combines and leaves, and forming the water again underneath. Well, the, the only way the, the only way to know for sure is test the theory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely, definitely do a little research, research on that. Sounds it worth sounds doing like it if all, it's, if, all, if all it's going to cost you is a couple of magnets and a couple of yeah. tubes. I mean, you're going to do it, and it's either going to work or it's not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean uh, copper tubing would probably work for the, for the tubing. Yeah, that's that's pretty readily available. There's this uh, whole bunch of extra magnets at work. Worst case scenario, you could use um, um, fish line tubing, you know, the bigger stuff, not the smaller stuff. They've got all different gauges. Just fish to line test tubing. Whether, yeah, I mean, they've got, they've got gauges that you could, you know, stick your middle finger into with no problem. Um, you go to a, right. go to a pet store and you get the really large tubing. It's a large plastic tubing. Oh, that's um, stuff. Airline. airline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I I use all different gauges of that because, you know, I build ponds, I have a pond in my backyard, a pond in my basement, a crap load of tanks, and I raise fish and tell, sell them to the fish stores and stuff like that. And um, so we use different gauges of tubing for things um, to pump both air and water. And it's wider, um, uh, soda straw. Yeah, well, it's a lot wider than that. <laughs> Especially for pumping water. I mean, I use the large gauge tubing for the for the indoor pond. Um, we have two pumps in there that do about a thousand gallons an hour, so we're getting about two thousand gallons an hour. Um, I'm also working on prototypes for completely 100% recycling um, filtration systems. Um, I've got a prototype on the inside and prototype we're working on on the outdoors. The outdoor one is going to come more to completion first, but um, so far, the outdoor one is like maybe 30% completed, and it's already doing a lot better than the standard, you know, bucket filter that, um, you know, we that we had going. That you know, once a month, it's just rather unpleasant to clean the thing, and it's, all the nasty smell comes out. And, you know, it's why deal with that. And um, I'm basically, do you know what a bog filter is? It doesn't sound like something very pleasant. Well, no, it's actually it's it's very pleasant actually. Um, um, a bog filter is basically when you know how there's plants that grow in marshlands. Half of them are flowers, yeah. anyway. Um, what you're doing is basically taking a section of the pond and making it shallow and putting it into like a horseshoe motion. Um, it's actually a little bit higher than. Um, you know, the other part of the pond, and you're pumping water into one end of the horseshoe that goes around the whole horseshoe and then exits back into the pond, and you've got, you know, rocks, and you know, blocking it off, so it has to overflow over that. And in that horseshoe, you've got all sorts of different types of plants that can grow. You know, whatever will grow directly in water and mud and, and not get root rot as a, as a, you know, consequence. And because plants suck in water indiscriminately, you know, it's not like they're going to go, oh, I'm going to take in the water, but I'm not going to suck in the microscopic algae particles. I'm not going to suck in the pH. I'm not going to suck in the fish shit. No, I'm just going to suck in the water. They don't have the ability to do that. So they suck in everything 
And so they take that material and they make, well, more of themselves as they grow. So that, that keeps Basically, the, it's a, a, a swamp that cleans things out. The marshlands yeah, exactly. do the cleaning, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then when things get too overgrown, you just trim that, and then you, you mulch that back into dirt, and it's, it's going to be more fertile than any potting soil you can buy. So that helps the garden. But what I've done is I've hybridized that with the idea of a what's called a natural gravel filter. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, a gravel filter. But th yep. this, is, this is like a larger scale. Um, the water is piped into the bottom of the filter. And on the bottom, you have large stones. And then you go up the next level, they're a little smaller. Go up the next level, they're a little smaller. So all the way at the top, you have really fine gravel and sand and residue and things like that. And the water pressure, the pump is pushing it into the bottom, and it has to rise up through all these layers. And all of the particles catch in the layers. And then the end result at the top is clean water. Hmm. Good. Now, so I'm, I'm merging that with the concept of a bog filter, so you have all these marshland plants growing in there, and what you have is a natural gravel filter that will never get clogged up because the root systems that are going to be growing in there are taking the particles that get trapped and sucking them in and creating plant mass with it. Sort of like an outdoor hydroponic system. Mm -hmm. In a sense, yeah. yeah. yeah that's what so, my brother uses for his... Um, salt water tank is the um, water goes down into three separate tanks and he has snails that eat the algae that grows in the bottom tanks out yeah, in the snails are your water. friend <laughs> yeah but that's yeah, the same we, kind we, of system he uses on a salt water tank yeah well for fresh water um i use snails and algae eaters um they're they're a good cleanup crew i'd i'd also love to use some some crayfish but the ones i keep obtaining keep keep dying and i haven't been able to catch any in the wild because um there's uh, too much flooding jay you're whirlwinding again here. okay there we go that's better um but yeah, those are good critters for cleanup, but um, they don't do much about the midwater algae. That's why it's important to have a collection system. And um, you know, I'm obviously going to be loading up the uh, the bog filter with with snails on the surface as well. And if it can grow, if the plants can grow thick enough in there, and surely they will. I might also put some placostomus or hypostomus in there. You know, algae eaters. But the plants need to be really thick because we got critters running around, you know, raccoons, things like that. And wow. um, I, I don't, I don't want my fish to be an easy grab for them. Um, my pond is feet deep, so the pond itself, it's obviously not an, an easy grab for them, and they can't really get at anything. But the bog filter is only about six feet by three feet by three feet. And, you know, right as you get up to the top, there's not going to be much space between, you know, where the gravel is and up to the water line. So it will be something. So i got to make sure there's enough vegetation growing in there so the algae eaters can just, you know, slip between the plants and, and it's, it'll be impossible um, for them to, to get at. Because, like, um, especially irises. Um, have you ever seen irises growing alongside ponds? Yes. Yes, I have. Oh yeah, the leaves get taller than me, and I'm six foot one. Um, we've got some irises alongside our pond too. It's pretty freaking cool. So we want to plant some irises in there, some some cat and nine tail, a um, bunch of other stuff. And not only do those uh, do a really good cleaning job for the pond, but um, you know they they get really thick. So algae eaters could weave in and out of there no problem, and raccoons and things that have a real difficult time get, getting at them. They're not going to be able to get at it. Yeah, plus they blend in with the coloring of that type of stuff. Yep. They're like chameleons. I swear to God, we, we always raise tons of um, of algae eaters. And the way we have our pond constructed, it's in a staircase going down. And at the bottom, there's corral points. So we could walk down the stairs, literally, drain the pond down to a bare minimum. All the fish are clumped together, so we just scoop them in buckets and, you know, bring them in the house and sort them out, whatever we're doing. And what's amazed me 
is when you get the pond empty, although it, it looks like it's empty, but looks can be deceiving because, you know, sure, you've only got a couple inches of water in there. The water's completely clear. You've let all the dirt settle, but you still got to gotta scoop your net around in there because algae eaters are that good at hiding. Oh, yeah. Regardless how big they are. I mean, it looks like the thing is empty. You're looking in there. You're sure there's no fish in there. And then you start scooping your net around, and lo and behold, all this movement, There's all you're upsetting all the algae eaters, and they're running into the net. And those things are expert hiders, man. That You know, if it comes to a game of hide-and-go-seek between them and you, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so, I mean, these are the type of, no pun intended, with bog filter, but grassroots technologies that are, you know, easy for for anyone to come across, and it's like, and build themselves. So, like, okay. And even enough. easier, speaking of uh, grass, it just reminded me of some, an even easier technology to use than cracking hydrogen using uh, untested technology or old technology or even new technology is methane. All you got to do is let vegetation rot, and you got methane. Interesting. Yeah, and the good thing about methane is it doesn't produce the bad greenhouse gases, uh, like nitrous oxides. Yeah. But what what I was gonna say is like in a pond system like that, you know, let's say uh, you enjoy fishing and you also enjoy a lower grocery bill. So okay, catch yourself some bluegill, they'll breed mm -hmm. in a small pond with no problem. And this is the they'll thing breed in a little you. puddle. Yeah, even, you know, even like I'm in Chicago, so I don't own acres of property. My pond is like maybe 15 feet by 6 feet by 6 feet, on average, something like that. Mm. And, but if I, if I wanted to use this for food instead of raising fish to sell them and make money and then buying food, um, it's easy enough to catch bluegill out of just about any lake, any sort of lake, and you know um, you could breed bluegill in there, and you've got your little easy tech, uh, no maintenance filtering system sort of thing, and yeah, and, then just you're just, you're, yeah and you're and they love algae, um, and algae will build up so on the sidewalls, and then your bog filter's taking it out of midwater, so then it's easy as scooping your net in and catching out the biggest bluegill that that you can find, and um, you know, slice, dice, and fillet, and, you know, Your if snack. you really, really enjoy eating fish, then, you know, you've got it. Nature raised it for you for free. You know, the algae and all the bugs and things provided the food, and the uh, bog filter works on its own, and the fish just breed in there. So you spent no money, but you saved a lot of money because there's all those trips to the grocery store that now you don't have to make, so you can keep your cash. Yeah. You yeah, gotta watch out though. If you put any other uh, other little fish in there with them, those little fish will be toast. Maybe, and maybe bacon, not. And eggs and whatever. <laughs> yeah, bluegill eat just about anything, and they will bite on anything. Believe me, I, I fish too. So, will, so will goldfish. Well, they prefer vegetables. Uh, that's for sure. Veggies and worms. Goldfish are lazy. Bluegills. Yeah. Bluegills. Small mouth had, bass are good. Mm, yeah. Supply them with bugs and minnows, and they'll just breed yeah. like crazy. Cause, yeah, because I, I raise, like, um, fancy show guppies and things like that, so I get things bigger and prettier than than normally they might get. And I've got, like, these huge goldfish in the pond with guppies that, even though they're a lot larger than a standard guppy, they're still pretty small compared to the goldfish, but, you know, I just know how to, how to, so nature sets up its balance, and there's thousands and thousands of guppies breeding in there, and especially because the goldfish are more vegetarian, plus they're lazy as hell, and they don't want to chase after anything. Um, they just, they're they just eat up, yeah, they just eat up the algae and get real huge, and the guppies and swordtails and all these other fish we got in there, smaller than goldfish, um, you know, it's great. And all we do for the goldfish, we buy feeder goldfish for next to nothing. Because what most people don't realize is feeder goldfish are just baby goldfish. They turn into the big, pretty, multicolor goldfish. 
and oh, wow. you know, in the pond, they go from they go from like one inch in size to like really huge, like within a year. Yeah, they're they're just a cousin to a carp. Exactly. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, yeah. So people don't realize they're thinking, oh, feeders is different than these big, pretty goldfish that are so expensive. Well, no, not really, because you've got the the pretty comet gold, goldfish that have one, two, and three, and sometimes four colors with the big blowing fins, and they're you know a foot long, and like wow, selling for anywhere from from nine ninety five to nineteen ninety five, depending on the store and whatever. You know, if you got an environment to raise them in like this, you just buy little bitty feeder fish for next to nothing. They will turn into that within a year or two, and you wow. just saved yourself a lot of money. Yeah, that's all we do, and so we sell them to the pet stores real cheap. And um, like my best client, Ocean Design Aquarium, find his site at oceandesignaquarium.com if I remember correctly. But he sells our goldfish for four ninety nine, and that's what he would normally have paid for the size goldfish from the wholesaler to resell them at nine ninety nine. But I sell them to him at um, uh, twenty four fish for um, for forty bucks. So he's paying like a dollar sixty-five, something like that, per fish, and so he's making his money that way, and they sell out like that. I, I have wow. a demand and, and supply problem, not a supply and demand problem, which means there's more demand than supply. I'm in the process of expanding my facilities because I can't meet demand because I don't have enough supply. But that's going to be a blessing in a, in a year or two. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to finish up these blueprints, and I'm going to talk to uh, the machine shops that I know that uh, do stuff that I can't. Nice. And I'm going to put this engine together, and uh, one of these days I'll drive it around and show it off and say, hey, look what I got. What do you, because it's just a curiosity, what are you making these blueprints in? Are you using a software like SmartCam or, or AutoCAD or? I have DesignCAD 3D Max 15. Is that compatible with um, for interfacing with um, CNC machines? I think it will. Yeah. Because um, a friend of mine from back in the day, he's in Glendale, Arizona. Actually, he owns some S and T machining, and you know he's got a, a, a CAD machine shop to where that you know it's software driven, and you put in the specs, and you put in your big block of raw material, be it aluminum or whatever, and the machines carve it out. Um, Direct numerical makes, machining. Yeah, he makes some um, custom parts for motorcycles. Um, I think it was smtmachining.com or something, but don't quote me directly on it. You could probably find it, Google it. His name is Sebastian Blood. But um, he he told me, oh yeah, as long as you got the um, the blueprints on the CAD and you feed it into the machine, you could make anything on anything. Um, I used to call him up just just joking around sometimes I'd get directed to his office he'd pick up and he'd be like Mr. Sebastian I'd be like yeah you know the order of titanium dildos I ordered just still isn't here and he'd be like you know well you, keep, you, you, you know you keep changing your mind first you want silver then you want black I mean come on you can't keep changing the order what do you expect you know <laughs> we just joke around like that but that that was ba that was based on his comment that he could make anything out of anything as far as you know as long as you you, you can program the machine and stick in the block of material and um last I checked he used a program called smartcam but I would imagine these machines can interface within a number of different things it's probably just using a serial port or something I don't know i yeah. I'm not familiar but um you know obviously he would require you know some some money to do stuff like that if he's not going to do that out of the the, the the goodness of his heart he's got to pay for materials but he's definitely you know not going to not going to screw you over on the overhead um he's a very honest guy so um mm -hmm. when you need to mass produce stuff um he might be an option for mass producing the engine and he already makes custom parts for motorcycles so maybe he'd make a scaled down engine for motorcycles and carry it on his product line maybe that might be good it's a possibility I haven't talked to him in forever but there's really nothing stopping me from giving him a call if ever I wanted to so. I can export as uh, AutoCAD DXF uh, just about anything 
Yeah, um, I don't. Can you export a smart cam? I mean, I don't know if he's still using it. Last I checked, I don't know. But uh, I don't know. If AutoCAD is a standard. Now. AutoCAD is one of the okay. standards, and so are DX. Um, okay. In either one of I those, if if he can read read either one of those, I can send him send him the uh, blueprints like that. Yeah, it's just he. The reason him and I don't really talk that much anymore is because he's super busy running this place. I mean, he gets up early in the morning and comes home late at night, like six days a week. And plus, he's got a family and everything. So, yeah, you know, it's like he he was he was my you know my best friend back when we were teenagers, and he used to live down the block and shit. So, um, but he's um, you know, he's a, he's a young guy, but he's you know he's really doing good with his own business. Have you ever heard of Hammer Cycles? No. Well, he, he's, um, you know, him and Hammer Cycles, they're kind of merged or partnered or whatever you want to call it. I I don't know the specific details, but um, you might say they're in alliance, and Hammer's been around for decades. And so he's just really, you know, shot his way up the ladder of success really fast, and you know, they're all about custom parts. It's, you know, to what the customer needs. So the customer can call up and say, okay, I, I they don't make this and I want this made. So, you know, they can do a blueprint and whatever. So if you've already got the blueprint, then, you know, I should be able to, you know, to hook you up with them and go, okay, and this would be after you have your patent and everything, of course. And you go, you go all right, well, Sebastian, can, can you fill this down to... Uh, you know, to, to motorcycle size, because if you can, I think that the people who buy your shit are really going to like this sort of a deal, because I'm gonna, it's going to feel efficient. Yeah, I'm going to start out with motorcycle size, so neat scaling, unless he's got something huge going on, but I'm pretty sure that yeah, uh, those huge machines yeah. can make little ones. Yeah, oh yeah, you can make it. They, they can, I think he said that the machines can cut down to one one hundredth of a micron or something like that. It was some insanely small precision. Nice. Cut. Real nice, but I'm not sure I need that kind of precision. Okay, uh, but my point about, is uh, he can yeah. go small. <laughs> yeah, he can do it. He can do it. Yeah, it's 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 it, these these machines are it can be that precise because they're computer controlled. <clears throat> but as far as the listening audience don't quote me on that figure. I mean it's just I just remember it was something insanely small like that, like, oh, my God, you know, when he told me it was like, that is freaking, it can make some tiny, specific cuts. So it's that. Yeah, CNC is a very um, precise. I built cabinets most of my life, and I worked in shops that used CNC routers. And, I mean, you come, they give you the pieces, you put it together, it's just take you about a half hour to put together a cabinet after it came off the CNC machine. Wow. <laughs> They're good. Yeah, that's... I've done yeah, that's CNC work, so... That's pretty slick. And I got used to working within plus or minus a ten thousandth of an inch, and that became commonplace and easy. Right now, I'm lucky to be able to hold uh, between two and five thousandths on the lathes and mill that I've got available to me, so that's why I'm going to have to farm most uh, of the work out. And I just wanted to say, if anybody looks up Sebastian Glad and SMT Machining and they decide to, to give him a call and, and give him some business and, you know, have him create some parts, um, anybody listening, whether it's now or later on in the recording, um, tell them that, that you heard it on, on Type 1 Radio Lounge and uh, from, from Dave Kelso. Um, he will definitely appreciate that. Um, that sort of that sort of a mention, and um, that that would also make uh, negotiations go smoother. Obviously, he you know was my best friend back in the day, so <laughs> he would definitely appreciate hearing that. Oh, by the way, there's a bit of an inside joke. SM, SMT stands for um, Special um, Machine Technology, if I recall correctly, but um, <clears throat> it's a family-run operation, and he's um, he's Polish, and there's a joke that. SMT unofficially stands for um, Sebastian i Mamu i Tatu, which means uh, Sebastian Mother and Father. So that was just kind of like a play on words acronym joke, you know, crossing mm. 
span of two languages. Dual purpose <laughs> acronym. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a family owned operation. So. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool stuff. It's like all this stuff is aligning. And I mean, you know, just just think maybe, you know, first year you're making this motor for, for motorcycles and cars and things like that. And then who knows, maybe maybe your next step is going to be to design a more efficient um, um, pond pump or something. You know, for things like, you know, within within my line of work because water needs to be pumped. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, things like that. So it's like these pumps are really, you know, expensive when you buy them. So imagine if you could create a competing product. It may not be more efficient, but I might be able to make one last longer. Well, that'd be cool. Last longer, more durable, and more inexpensive to, to manufacture and produce and stuff. Because, um, like, the, the one I have in, in my pond, it's about 300 bucks, and it'll do an hour and and be like testing one two three can you hear me can hear you now it's coming back I think oh okay um, what I was saying is that, you know, if you could make something that uses a quarter of the amount of the energy, <clears throat> um, more lightweight, a lot more durable, pumps, you know, twice as much and, you know, at like half the cost of, you know, so it's like, a, you know, 150 instead of, you know, 300, um, you would definitely have a superior competing product and there'd be a lot of pond owners happy with you and a lot of competitors not so happy with you. <laughs> yeah. I don't care about the competition. I just want to beat them. Yeah. Cause, as far as this motor hey, goes, there is no competition. Yeah, exactly. So if we can adapt these sorts of things for all different types of motors in, in all different sorts of industries, then that's really going to paradigm shift, you know, people's thinking, too. Yeah. The so only one I wouldn't want to put it on is a Harley-Davidson. It wouldn't sound right. <laughs> Why? It's, it's super quiet? No, it's two stroke. It just wouldn't sound right. Oh, I thought because Harley, Harley Davidson is loud. I thought you were saying your motor's kind of quiet. And no, it's just as loud as any other uh, engine. It's just a two stroke. It does. It will not sound right. Ah. You've heard. The, uh, you know what they sound like. You 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 were burning up there. For so I don't. Everything's breaking up here. Yeah, yeah, we were having some breakup. Hey, this happens sometimes, especially with all the um. Solar flare activity, Earth changes, and just the way technology is, and so on and so forth. Things get a little weird sometimes. Just got to be patient, roll with the punches. Um, it, the, the breakups usually yeah. end sooner rather than later. So, I'm sorry. Please repeat. Okay, a two cycle just doesn't sound like that big uh, monstrous four cycle. It's got yeah, a different got sound that. to it. Very high. Pitch. Yeah. It's got a high pitch, even though it runs the same RPM. Okay. All right. But yeah, yeah Harley's um, weren't made for them high-end RPMs. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying it's going to be a high-end RPM. It's just going to sound like a high-end RPM. Ah, okay. It's going to fire on every top top stroke. Right, right. Like a chainsaw motor or a yep. old Suzuki 553 cylinder that. Used to yep. be one of the f fastest two strokes on the road. I think they even went up to 750s. Yeah. So, um, do right. you, you have a website with this in, in any information on this or some sort of profiles on on Facebook or whatever? If you're interested? In I haven't know, put anything on. I haven't put it. You. Um, yeah, machineman93 at yahoo.com. 
All right, so that's email. Um, I know you have a DeviantArt. Um, what's your DeviantArt URL? Kevin Zabo. Okay, so it's kevinzabo.deviantart.com. Yep. Or the other well. way around, deviantart.kevinzabo.com or something like that. One of them. Oh, yeah. But right, I, right. I don't have any <laughs> uh, information on my engine on, D, on DA right now. I'm not, I'm not going to put it up there. Um, yeah, mine is paradigm dash shifting dot com. Jay's got a DeviantArt too. E S A J A Y dot DeviantArt dot com. All right. Yeah, we're all a bunch of freaking deviants up on Type One Radio today. That is somehow <laughs> a, that is somehow appropriate. That just really yeah. is. Uh, we're yeah. Let's go for a minute. Uh, commercial break. Uh, By the way, where the hell is Sonic? He's not here again. Flawless <laughs> science right. believes you deserve the right to have a long and healthy he life. Was in the lounge. You deserve to have toxin-free air and earlier. water and foods rich in minerals and nutrients. Factory farming, genetically modified foods, and thousands of environmental contaminants are polluting our world and stripping your right to healthy life away from you. FlawlessScience.com helps you regain these rights. FlawlessScience.com makes makes natural natural products products and provides the best nutraceutical products to enhance your quality of life, your state of health, and well-being. So whether you're struggling with obesity, diabetes, hypertension, memory loss, allergies, high cholesterol, neuropathy, or to spice things up in the bedroom, FlawlessScience.com is here to help you. FlawlessScience.com ships quickly worldwide in discreet packaging and will never sell your information to anyone for any reason. For all your wellness, weight control, extreme muscle building, and nutraceutical needs, visit FlawlessScience.com today. Your life as it has been is over. Don't miss the Middle Chamber with Trader X on AFR. Listen to the Paradigm Ship Saturday night, 8 p.m. Central. Okay, we're back. All right. And one and one last commercial. When I'm constipated, I take Fibercon, but when I want to be full of shit, I take Farrakhan. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, well, we're doing the 3D PC again. Flush. <laughs> but we don't flash, we flush. <laughs> All righty, there was something I was going to ask here. Oh, yes. Um, if my friend Taylor, who is at um, IamDarknessTaylor.DeviantArt.com, is feeling brave enough to call in and join us, uh, join us, or you know what I mean, merge in to this unity consciousness of this epically awesome radio show here, I'm sure there's a call-in number um, and I'm sure Jay's got it somewhere. He's at the um, control panel for all this radio stuff, and he yeah. can merge calls in and all that. Uh, guest call-in number is 347-995-5515. And that, and that number again is? 347-996-5515. Your listenership is important to us. Please hold the line. You are caller number 3,684 in queue to be answered. Your estimated wait time is four years, three days. No, just kidding. Anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Taylor, if you want to join us, come on in. It's a party. Hey, we gave you the free plug. You know. I am darknesstaylor.deviantart.com. Come check out her awesome stuff. Are you there, Taylor? Well, um, Jay will tell us when and if she calls, and he'll he'll suddenly announce, oh, we have a caller from the blah, blah, blah area code. Let's see who that is. And then, you know, he'll merge in the line if she decides to call. Hey, Taylor, do me a favor. If you're deciding not to call, let me know in a Facebook message. Um, otherwise, if you are going to call in, then call in. It'd be cool if you join us. And you could interrogate Kevin about his engine. I like to be interrogated about my engine. Oh, yeah. You know, he loves it when the ladies touch his engine. I'm serious, man. He's just... You're I'm just not gonna even going to go there. 
<laughs> I already did. <laughs> All right. Oh. Yeah, that's why you don't let out your car or your wife. <laughs> Someone could throw a rod in either of them. <laughs> She just said on, on the Facebook, I heard you say my name. Yes, Taylor. I said your name. I said your DeviantArt account, which is IamDarknessTaylor.DeviantArt.com. Go check out her stuff. So now what I'd like to know from you, Taylor, is are you going to be calling in? We, d we did give out the, the call-in line. We're talking to you, Taylor. We know you're listening. We have the psychic powers to know you're listening. We're in your head. Not just playing. <laughs> so are you going to call in, Taylor? And that number again, Jay, is... 347-9-2-1-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0
<laughs> or they're going to want... If I put this into an eight-cylinder configuration, they're going to say, okay, well, uh, good luck. And then they're going to say, well, you really shouldn't have beat us by three laps. <laughs> that was that was rude of you. How shameful. I'm Just not confident in this engine's abil ability. Huh? Um, I am that, that confident in this engine's ability to beat out the... Uh, current technology that I would put it on a racetrack once I perfect the technology to that point. Nice. Yeah, it'd be nice to see something outrun a gasoline engine for sure. Um, and, not pollute, and not pollute the atmosphere like it does. Electrics can do it, but they don't last very long doing it. No, they don't. Uh, I watched an electric go up against a Ferrari. It did it. Wow. By a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I used to have a... Um, my parents had 80 acres out in East Texas, and I had a <coughs> golf a golf cart that I put an oversized electric motor in, and I, I could do wheelies with the golf cart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of power in a one-horse electric motor. Oh yeah, I had like a, uh, I put a seven horse in there. Seven horse electric. Wow, that's a lot of power. It's a big motor too. Oh, I know. I moved them. Anything bigger, I get up, somebody else to move. I've had to hook them up to um, dug on um, sawdust collecting collection bags. You know. They are a big motor, size of a small garbage can. Yeah. It sounds like you could take that golf cart and hook a trailer to it and uh, go out for the weekend, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you had to charge it every day, so, you mm. know, I had to have it in the garage every day, every night being charged. So I could use it around the property the next day. Mm -hmm. But we well, uh, we've got roughly a half hour left in the show, just so everybody knows. <laughs> just <laughs> waiting for people to call us. We used yes. to go out getting. We're when lonely. I was a, Please call. <laughs> we used to go out when I was a teenager with this big old. 10 gauge shotgun and get drunk and blow armadillos apart with them. <laughs> so when you were a teenager, you 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 so when you were a teenager, you'd be shooting armadillos and um uh brontosaurus, maybe a few T-Rex. You logged onto the internet using real logs. And must have been um, it. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, I do have a um piece of a dinosaur tooth, but I didn't shoot uh. it. <laughs> yeah, a friend of yours did back in the day, you know. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, logging into the internet, using cutting internet. the real logs and Smoke watching for, out for the T-Rex while you're cutting the logs. <laughs> <laughs> the original internet was a smoke signal. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, Kevin, you should be getting mm -hmm. that video in right now. Yeah, it popped in. Okay, it shows a whole bunch of different things. Uh, this guy that uh, made the video, it, this uh, John Seachka or whatever his name is, used to come by and visit, and he, did, he got to look at a lot of proprietary inventions and stuff that were kind of classified hmm so uh if i if i watch this video is my computer gonna explode no but <laughs> is it gonna dial the illuminati no but you no man it's scientists gone wild do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> they show all their stuff just for yeah. you <laughs> Let's 
do a show about scientists going wild. How about that? Yes, that would definitely be the thing to call it. Hey, Jake, can you upload audio into the blog talk interface while you are on the show, or does it not let you do that? Uh, I could, I could, yeah, I could probably do it. I don't know how long it takes to upload it, though. Which, which clip you want uploaded? Well, just like I was saying before the show, the uh, little um, funny thing that I that I did on my Reverb Nation, um, ReverbNation.com forward slash Time Warrior, and you go into the songs, and it's uh, a special message from the RIAA. <laughs> okay, uh, look. Yeah, I should be able to download that. And if you get, I mean, I could try like playing it from from speakers into the mic here but last time I tried that on uh, 32 degrees of insanity with Donnie Gilson um, it kind of came out a little choppy so it sounds better if blog talk is injecting the music directly just get a check see if I got it up there or, or uh, if I know where it's at oh here's a nice one we could play uh, 90 PC Happy Fun Time Meditation. <laughs> That'll work. Okay. <laughs> no, but I yeah I want the um I want the special message from the RA thing. I want to <coughs> to share that <coughs> on air here. And um, Taylor messaged me back, and um, in brief, she said that she'd love to call in but you know she's getting redirected in her in her reality right now to um head on over to a friend's uh, well, you know in person physical reality calls and um she said that um she'll call me when she gets back although we've got less than a half hour for the show so she probably won't be able to call the show um and she said that she enjoyed what i heard though <clears throat> and she said speeding on a bike <laughs> in a heart thing and she said <laughs> She, she said, they almost got me one. We've got a kindred spirit out there. Incredibly weird. I'm I'm hearing a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm here. Oh, you are. Okay. Here 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 we all are. Uh, there must have been one of those weird blank out periods or something. Yeah. Um, I was just trying to say that you got a you got a kindred spirit. Uh, we're we're all we're we're all we're, we're all on DeviantArt except for Dinosaur Hunter over here. But, uh, <laughs> it's like besides that, we've all got um, DeviantArt. <laughs> Mine's Paradigm Shifting DeviantArt dot com, and Kevin's is Kevin uh, Zabo dot DeviantArt dot com. Taylor's is I am Darkness Taylor dot DeviantArt dot com, and Jay's is E S A. J says E S H J A Y dot U D R dot com, and um, you know you can go to dinosaur dot org dot y. Um, <laughs> oh, we're getting hard for breakup now here.
<laughs> Are we back? back? I still I think so. Oh. Yo, yeah. wow, that was cool. I am Villain from Astor Command. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What? An, and that was, I, I don't know if the Illuminati were playing their harp or that was Solar Flares or what was going on. <laughs> still going on. Well, at least some of us are audible. Yeah, I'm still here. I'm, are, the, are the Illuminati playing their harp, or is that just solar flares? <laughs> hey, that's a or solar flares. Skype, or maybe, maybe, maybe Skype's constipated. It's using the 3D PC. <laughs> <laughs> the third dimensional porcelain container. <laughs> when you need to be paradigm shifting, you Oh, we got whirlwind effect again. Oh, it's gone now. Jay's just blowing a lot of wind lately. Maybe it's that bad. Welcome to the 9D PC Happy Fun Time Meditation. Please, 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 sit, sit, sit with, with your, your legs, legs crossed, crossed, crossed in a comfortable place. place. Focus, Focus on the sound of my voice, voice. and let's begin. Take a breath. Take a breath. Breathe in slow. Just taking keys from I'm able to locate the, uh, the sound bits of uh, the CDO that I've Are you kidding? Just go in the full song. Stuff going on again. Yeah. There we go. That's sort of. Jay, turn off your fan. Thank you. What I was trying to say is that if you go to ReverbNation.com forward slash Time Warrior, you click on all songs so that you get the full list. Then you hit Control F in your browser for the find function. Type in R I A A. It'll take you right to it. You can't miss it. Hey, I heard we are that. Still on. We're yeah, back on. We're... <laughs> yeah, apparently someone's trying to turn us on instead of turning us off. Um... Well, if they are listening to us, they're not calling. This is Homeland Security. Thought crimes detected. Please stay where you are, and a man in black will be dispatched to your house to rape your dog and send you to the Amish to live for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no phone, oh. lights, no cars, and no computer. <laughs> oh, it's Gilgan's Island, huh? So, Jay, do you know how to find it, or am I doing it? Not enough job at pointing out the obvious. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I found uh, found the thing. I'm trying to f locate the song now. Yeah, did you click into all songs? I did now. Okay. Uh, now, when, when that loads, you hit Control and F to bring up the find function. Then you type in R-I-A-A, -A, which stands for Really Ignorant Assholes Association. <laughs> hey, in Dallas, they have a building named after me. It's the CSR building. It's called Can't Remember Shit. 
Hey, my memory is actually annoyingly good. I remember all sorts of inconvenient stuff when people really don't want me to, and they complain about it all the time. <laughs> yeah, well, my wife's that things. way, too. <laughs> ten years from now, I can remember where I put a wrench ten years from now. But well, I don't need a sex change to, to do it. conversation with... 30 seconds ago. Oh, yeah, my memory is not a transcript, either. My, my memory is more abstract can tell someone about a conversation, but I can't, like, get it back in, like, you know, exact words. It's not a photographic memory. Like, ten years from now, I could... Oh, yeah, I remember that first um, radio show that I was on with, with, with Kevin Zabo, and there was that, that, that engine he was doing, and we were being really crazy on the air, and, you know, like, things like that. But I couldn't quote a book, chapter, and verse. Can't find Are you it. located? It won't. Uh, it won't. It, I don't have a control F function here. Control Frank. We're, I'll do it, <laughs> and I'll paste you the link. Uh, just about every browser I know has Control F. It, well, yeah, including Firefox, which is what he's using. So I don't know why he can't pull that's what it I up. use. I use. I, use control, all the time. I push the Control F and it don't work. It's very strange. <laughs> um, click on the very top bar of your browser. Just one click, and then try Control F. Top bar. The very top yeah, bar. Yeah, you know the top, the, the top bar of the of the window itself. He uses Firefox. The very top bar of the window itself. You know, you got like file and edit and a little X to close and the square. Higher than that, all the way up, the red bar. Or in my case, it's red. In Windows case, it's blue. Yeah, um, I'm running. Oh, in too. Windows case, it's whatever color you make it. <laughs> whatever they want you to have, actually. Yeah. Oh, no. I changed the colors. As a matter of fact. I made my own computer. It's like um, if I bring up a Internet Explorer window, it says Google.com um, as if technologies. <laughs> I, I, I run I run Ubuntu Linux, so you can do whatever the hell you want with Linux because it's Linux and it's laid out like that. I pasted the link into the chat that has all of us in here. You should see the link to it, Jay. And then when you go to that link, um, you know, there should be, you know, an option to download and so on and so forth, all the different options. But I pasted the link. I'm still wondering what happened to Sonic. I am getting a phone call. Um, this might actually be Taylor. Hold, let me find out. Hold on. Hello. market or some crap. Yeah, they all think they can sell you some. So it works. Yeah, so so Jay, you got the link? Yes. It's okay, download. cool. Loading right now. Yeah, these radio shows are getting more and more interesting. 
interesting as technology evolves and um, so players do what they do, Harp does what it does, and uh, I'm so convinced what it is. Well, it's just scalar wave technology and stuff. You could do a search on it. Plenty what I don't know is the fact that it's the military doing it. Uh, I just don't know the fact that the military is the one doing it. Well, there's lots of militaries all over the world with that sort of technology. It's not only the United States that had it. I guess maybe it's only the military that actually wants to be at that high. Maybe that's why they're doing it. Uh, civilians want to be up high in the Arctic Circle? Uh-uh. I guess it's a blame of that. I don't know what to call it. So ordered for it. Going up the Arctic Circle, but I've been living in the, in the uh, Nevada desert for the last ten years. Well, get used to it. Can't get it to load. My browser. What do you mean? My browser's froze. Oh, weird. No, it, that's it's Internet Exploder. It's because it's a, my computer's overheating when I shut off the fan. Uh. Uh, just move the microphone away from the fan if you can. It's the microphone's the game I'm on. It's on a headset. Oh. Mm -hmm. you know, a windscreen? Hey, Carolyn's talking to us. Hey, Carolyn. I mean, in the chat room here, in this oh. box. We've all got access to that little Skype yeah. box, don't we? No. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we we've got access yeah. to that Skype box. Is All right, it, uh, got some squeaky noise to it. You guys, there? Can you hear me? Uh, uh, yeah, I can, I can hear, hear you. you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I was listening to the porcelain issue. That's not that serious. I like. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I love the uh, doggy. Uh, that is a cool picture, man. What's in the cup? The what? What's in the cup? I love the picture, Ken, with the dog. Oh, I'm going to I love you, man. Cool. Yeah, I don't think um, or Japanese or anything like that. That's cool. Today we were listening to the news because Again, had me off and on for a while. Had to do some later. We're enjoying. Yeah, you're breaking up a little for a second. One, two, three. Fair enough. So, yeah, uh, this connection's been a little, little weird. Yeah, for a while now. I got the, the weirdest thing happened, the darn thing for uploading the song. I got the song uploaded. Your Windows is possessed. Windows is possessed right out of the box. Well, we we got nine minutes left, so if you get the song uploaded, it's not really a little parody clip thing I made. That's only about a minute long, 
So please send a blog talk that's true, that'd be great. Get a douche. <laughs> oh yeah, Skype does that. I'm very familiar with it. It's terrible sometimes. A lot of times it'll go for days and you hear absolutely no noise and perfect clarity, great video, and then next day you got absolutely nothing. You'd be lucky to be connected on on uh, text. <laughs> Well, the thing I'm wanting Jay to play isn't really that long. It's only like around about a, a minute, something like that, little parody thing I made. So it's very short. Well, we got another hour on the podcast portion. I, well, I, I'd, like to, I'd, like to, I'd like to get this into the blog talk portion so it ends up in the archive, um, in the in the recorded uh, show, you know, on the on the main page for the show episode. Well, it, it, it also... It records it as a podcast, which means you got an extra hour if you want it. Dave, did you... Cool. Uh, when I went to the event, it was telling me that it couldn't connect with the blog talk. You don't know why that happened. Yeah, I don't either. But did you have the file put it in the blog talk? Well... Can you get your blog talk through? Sounds like somebody's trying to win. Somebody kept passing out every time. Is that a gas problem or is that somebody in the... And what color is the wind? I'm afraid it is. Jay's typing in the box saying and there's some sort of problems here. Hmm. All right. It's the Illuminati. They're on to us. It's not processing properly. Uh, it should have been up. It, it's such short clip. It should, should have uploaded it right away, but it's not. It's, oh, it's, out, it's, up, it's, up, it's not processing it yet. It's still processing it. And the That's other Internet one, Exploder. In the, uh, in the maybe meantime, maybe maybe refresh the page interface or something. I could try that. Clear your cache and reload. I'm having difficulty hearing you. A combination of crappy signal and whirlwind. Okay, we got it. We got it, okay. LegalMusicSearch.com This is a public service message from the Recording Industry Assholes of America, a greedy multinational corporation. When you illegally download MP3s off the interweb, you are committing copyright infringement, which is against the law. We will find you, you criminal scum. We will have our way with your 12-year-old daughters. We'll play intern with your college student. Uh -huh. We will break your disabled uncle's legs off. We will skull fuck your elderly grandmother. And as for your deceased great-grandfather, well, does the term necrophilia ring any bells for you? Yeah, and if you're really bad, we may even rape your dog and send you to the Amish. Just think about it, folks. The Amish. No phones, no cars, no lights, and certainly no computers. You won't be doing much illegal downloading then, will you, you criminal scum? So just remember, folks, give us all your money, even though we charge too much. For our inflated music prices, yes. And do not illegally download from the interwebs, because we will hunt you down and kill you. This has been a public service message from the Recording Industry Assholes of America.
<laughs> yeah, that's what I did a few years ago. That's a good one. Yeah, Reverb.com forward slash Time Warrior. Click on all songs. And for those of you who have functional control F keys, type in R I A fine box, you'll get it. The download you get off of uh, uh, Blog Talk is the entire three hours long. Ah, okay. So you have three hours. That's what I, that's what I, okay, that's what I wasn't sure about. What happens at, after the uh, two hour point, you don't have the main radio broadcasting, but it saves it as the entire file <clears throat> in the ah, okay. <clears throat> Well, we got two minutes left, so as far as anybody who's listening right now live, um, you know, uh, anything that anybody else wants to say. Nobody listening. Or nobody calling, but they might be listening. I hope you're listening. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, listen, I'm going to find out about it, I'm telling you. We're, and Kevin's going to rape your dog and send you to the Amish. I don't do that. <laughs> Dinosaur hunter might get some lizards after you, you never know. Yeah. Anything could happen. That's, that's the way things are. It's 2012, and anything can happen. Well, it's going to happen for... December's coming soon. <laughs> yeah, well, you got one minute left on the clock here. So we want to say anything before the live stream cuts off. We've got to wait another hour before they get the um, the podcast on the line as the file. Uh, Welcome uh, to the 9D PC Happy Fun Time Meditation. Please. <laughs> sit, sit, sit with your legs crossed, 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 crossed in a comfortable In 90 place. seconds, I don't think I could do a good commercial Focus plug for my engine. The sound of my voice. <clears throat> oh, okay. But yeah, buy now my I engine, you'll love it. This, Drive well, it. Well, while, you're, while you're listening, don't masturbate to it, too. That's creepy. <laughs> Check us all out on DeviantArt. Check us all out on DeviantArt. Buy his engine when it comes out. Um, you know, be good and don't do anything we wouldn't do and whatever. <laughs> okay, I'll play the song. Looks like we're playing our Welcome outro then. To the 9D PC Happy Fun Time Meditation. Please sit with your legs crossed in a comfortable place. Focus on the sound of my voice. And let us begin. Ten seconds left. Take a breath. Breathe in slowly through the nose. For listening. Yeah, just that deep in our too. Well, we exhale to the mouth. Let the music take me. Three seconds. Self-destruct. Two. One. As you travel back in time in your mind, you place There's supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom. When you were but a kid, with not a care in the world, your one and only mission in this life is to just have fun. Take a breath.
imagine now in your mind something or someone that makes you feel extremely appreciated and thankful. But not enough to masturbate. Doesn't matter who or what it is. Whatever gives you that highest sense of joy, excitement, thankfulness, appreciation, who or whatever, doesn't matter. Just lock in on that. Don't these dogs now. That's not cool, no bestiality. Keep focusing on that. Listen to the music. Take a breath. Still focusing on the, the appreciation. That's good. Because if you notice the appreciation itself, it's almost like a wave of energy. An energetic field as it pulses. Send, receive, send, receive, send, receive, send, receive. It pulses. Take a breath. Focus on the pulse of that energetic feel, but simply the feeling of appreciation in and of itself. Put out of your mind for the moment the person, place, thing, or idea that makes me feel appreciated. You focus only on the energetic feeling of the appreciation that is coursing through every fiber of your being. Take a breath. Now imagine in your mind a big knob almost like that of a volume control on a stereo. Or it could be an up and down equalizer lever if you would like. Take a breath. Imagine yourself now slowly raising that volume very, very slowly as you turn the volume up, 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 up. up. You notice something. That energetic feeling. It's rising as you continue to turn the volume up, 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 It's rising. Take a breath. Keep it slowly going, as high as you can take it. You don't need a person, place, thing, circumstance, idea, or anything to make you feel appreciated or happy or excited or joyful. You can feel these things for your own sake just because you damn well want to and because you damn well can. See? Now wasn't that easy? Society taught you one thing. They said that you need to justify your external circumstances is a permission to slip in order to be able to feel anything higher than that of misery. But I tell you now, the society is full of it, that you can feel happy, and you can feel joyful, and you can feel thankful anytime you want, just because you want to. Just because you decided to change your mind and shift out of the paradigm of misery and move into the paradigm of thankfulness. Take a breath. 
Wasn't that easy? Still feeling it? Keep that volume going up. Take a breath. Still feeling it? Keep that volume going up. Hey, don't let the end of the meditation stop you. Keep it going up. Take a breath. Back. In the whirlwind. <laughs> yep. We're not live streaming anymore. You'll have to catch us on the podcast, folks. Hey, Reset, you have anything to add to the... Uh, I was actually kind of in and out of the room doing stuff while the show was on. I caught bits and pieces of it, but I didn't actually catch the whole entire thing. I was probably going to see if I could do that in the archives. I don't know how cool it's going to come. Yeah, it's been quite a technical <clears throat> this Yeah, I don't know what thing is, but Jay, you gave me a call the other day and left a message. It kind of had the same thing going on. It sounded like you were saying I don't know. All y'all are sounding like Max Hedrum right now. So reset. What you what you busy with? You're not cleaning out any more litter boxes, are you? Uh, not currently. No, uh, I, I actually haven't really slept uh, for the past couple of days. So I've kind of every now and again I'll lay down for a couple of minutes, get up, go over to the other room, check on the cats, maybe feed them a little bit, then come back and listen to you guys, and then move some shit around and. <laughs> Ah, crazy. Oh, well, yeah, well, well, right, well, huh? you, well, you know, you you know what I meant by the reference, though, reset, because you used it a, a while back. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I was being metaphorical. No. Yeah, no, we're all good there. <laughs> all right, cool. But uh, no, actually, one of the major things I've been doing is I, you know, one of the big things I've been doing for the past couple of years is just kind of downloading anything I can find off the net and archiving. I've basically run out of room again, so I'm going through and compressing video files so I can get more space to be able to download more. <laughs> it can be kind of a tedious process, but it needs to if be done. You want, if, you, if you want maximum space saving, use RAR compression. That compresses a bit more than zip or any of the others. Oh, video files? Anything. RAR compresses just more than zip, more than tar.gz, more than... You know what I mean? If you're looking to, to, to take a video yeah. file and zip it up into like a zip archive to save space, we'll use RAR. Well, that, that, that is it. That's not entirely what I'm doing. Really what I'm doing is uh, going through my hard drive. And, you know, sometimes you'll download a video and it'll be uh, like the actual format that the DVD is containing the menus and all that stuff. And it ends up being like a five gigabyte file. Uh, and yeah, you put it into something like... DivX. Yeah, or you put it into something like Handbrake. Yeah, you put it into something like Handbrake and you can just take the video out of it and compress it down to something like, you know, 700 megabytes as opposed to 500. Yeah, Linux you know, you lose Linux all the menus and stuff. But anyway, that's kind of what it's going through, looking for the huge file and kind of compressing it. You know, not, not necessarily trying to do anything, just kind of shrink them. So I can uh, okay, because sometimes, like, you know, because you can even take a video file and compress it even more with, like, you know, zero. Whatever. I thought maybe we're already working with compressed files, and uh, we're trying to add a little more compression. So if you were doing that, you could use like RAR. Okay. I I I, I know I got seven. I might check out the RAR R R A R one though. Yeah. Well, I, I, I did have one day, question about the. Uh, huh? I was just gonna say back in the day when um they were having the um RAR versus zip freaking battle. Um, Zip may have won as far as common um, usage, but RAR won as far as best compression. 
Mm. Yeah, and I know going through you know file sharing sites, people always complain when they come across uh, you know RAR files, you know RAR files. It's like oh, I gotta you know. It, it, okay, it's like you open the thing and there's a whole bunch of files listed, and you just have to you know right click and then you know uncompress or whatever if you're trying to open it. But people see all these this whole list of files and they think oh that's just too much to deal with. A zip file is the same thing except there's just the yeah. one file type. It's going, in and going into volumes because some file systems, if an individual file gets, gets too big, you start cranking out errors, and that just avoids that whole mess. Yeah. But no, I did have uh, one question I can maybe ask Kevin that I, I'm not certain if it got asked yeah, earlier right. or not. But uh, yeah, you were talking about the you know this uh, smaller type. Uh, engine being able to put out, uh, you know, something comparable to like a, you know, a four banger or something. I, I don't know. One, one of the idea I kind of had a while ago was getting, uh, you know, like a C class RV and getting some. I know Jay had been talking about the Joe cell, getting something like that in an RV. I mean, it, it would be strong enough to power something like that, right? Or would it have to be a oh, scaled up model? You have to or scale something? it up. Of course, you you can't expect a little tiny four cylinder, uh, two hundred cubic inch motor to power an RV. Uh, doesn't happen. Right. It's a physical impossibility. But uh, you definitely want to take that uh, scaling of the 14-liter uh, diesel, scale that down to 7 liters, and put it into um, the two-cycle mode. And what you get is the effect of having a 14-liter motor. Okay. I think what Reset's asking is, could it be upscaled if need be? To, to deal with an RV. Oh yeah, it can be scaled up. And I, I know you guys were also talking about, you know, if you put this on a, you know, a racetrack or something, that you'd, you know, put a little bit of a, a scaled up version in it also. But I mean, obviously, even a, you know, something bigger than what you would put in a car, going like your bus or something like that, right? Because of the extra torque you'd have to be putting on the engine or something, right? Oh yeah, you 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 scale up for that at least. Um, a tiny little end to it is the the core is uh, like a two inch crankshaft to power an RV. That's not something you get in a race car. Okay. Uh, that's not a little two guy giving a lot more energy, but obviously I was kind of figuring it would have to be scaled up. I wasn't sure how much, though. Proportionally, actually. Um, oh, let's see. Usually what they power a size RV with is uh, Cummins 454. It's basically a Chevy 454 with uh, Cummins hardware on top of it. Um, cut that down to about 300 cubic inches, keep the crankshaft the same size, um, up the compression just a little bit, and you'd have a little more power than that 454 originally delivered. Okay. Yeah, that's just you know, kind of one idea that I've had is, you know, getting an RV and getting it as... I guess, I don't know if self-sufficient is the right way to put it, but, you know, having to put as little maintenance into it as possible when you're on the road, just being able to pretty much mm. put some fuel in it and just kind of go, you know. Yeah. A low-maintenance RV, That's that would be everybody's dream. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too bad you couldn't solar power them. It's just uh, not enough sun coming down to run one of those monsters. Well, yeah. um, well, I mean, you can get actually, your electricity. Well, well, actually, sun, um, huh? well, actually, when, um, when, when, um, I don't know who's heard of Abram Hicks or not, but when um, e Esther and uh, Jerry Hicks had what um, they refer to as their monster bus, uh, they've gotten rid of it since. But when they had that, um, they actually did have a, uh, a solar array on the top, so they they do make it for. Um, larger scale RVs, but when I say bus, take me literally, I mean it's an RV that's the size of a fucking Greyhound. 
Uh, what they're dealing with is a supplementary power charger. Uh, what it would do is charge the battery or charge something while the thing was running in the sun. Uh, it There's no way a solar panel could ever produce enough power to run an RV. Oh, yeah. A lot. The, solar pa the, so the solar panels, all they do really in any instance is um, they charge the batteries, then you invert the power off the battery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can never power. go. Di you can never go direct from a panel to a to a wall outlet, no matter how no. you're thinking about doing it, because you need the battery in the middle. There's no way around it. Yeah, the battery has to store a lot of current. We got to make a battery that lasts at least 100 years, though. It's well, yeah, it's funny. One they, thing they just don't do it. <laughs> No, no. Well, one thing, Carolyn, you know, with her RV out here that she's mentioned to me a couple of times is, you know, it, you, we're not getting to start it every day, so you know, the battery will die every now and again. We'll have to jump it. Mm -hmm. But she says, you know, back, I'm able to let a battery sit for, you know, I don't know, months, and it wouldn't die on you. You know, you'd be able to just go up there and crank it over. But us, they're making batteries a little differently than they used to. I think what's going on with that battery is that there is a drain on it. Uh, that could very Something well in that RV is left on. Could be anything from an electric clock, even. Yep, oh, the electric mm. clock will stay on, and it'll it'll drain the battery. Even a few microwatts will drain the battery. Mm -hmm. Do that over time, and you get a dead battery. Yep. Well, would it make sense to unhook one of the terminals while it's just sitting there? Um, you'd lose all I'm the settings not, uh, on your as radio. Far as, as far as I know, you'd lose your settings on your Leave radio. Leave it on a trickle charger. You'd lose your settings on the radio, and if you've got an electronic ignition, some of those have to be uh, left on because, uh, okay. because it has... I, I, I don't think we're so much concerned about radio presets, but, you know... <laughs> This is going to get lost on it, but uh, what you'd want to do is leave it on a trickle charger. Okay. It's a, a very low-level charger, maybe um, half an amp a day. That would keep everything running. Or, you know, it would be kind of ironic. It, you take what, you know, those DC to AC inverters that you, have, that you plug into the car and people use them to run the Christmas lights and shit like that because you're providing your own amperage. Well, well, you hook one of those in, but then coming off of the inverter, you plug in a battery charger, like a car battery charger, and then you run that back into the battery. <laughs> it might last for a little while, but you still get some circuit losses. Uh, transistors that produce that kind of power have this beta, and it never exceeds one. Uh, it's well, the alpha yeah, well, well, it, well, it, well, at least, at least, if you could get, if you could use that to buy yourself some time, then uh, you know, if you can go yeah, from, you, from point, you point A to point B, to, yeah. Because I was gonna say, if it would even buy a few weeks of time, that might be all you need from, you know, starting up the engine to starting it up the next time. Trickle charger plugged into the wall. That's that's actually the uh, yeah. most efficient. It, at the most, it sucks up half an amp. Get yourself one of them long orange uh, extension cords. Yep, long long orange extension cord, uh, waterproof it. Oh yeah, those things are made waterproof anyway. Because I'm talking about the the heavy duty like work kind, not the not where the you cheap plug it in isn't waterproof. Oh uh, yeah, well that's true. But I'm thinking if yeah. he plugs it yep. in in the house and runs it out out a window or under a door or, or whatever. That's one part, and the other part, you leave it under the hood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the hood. Just keep both ends of the, of, uh, the cord dry, and you'll be all right. That sounds like a plan. Generally try to do that anyway, I guess, but yeah, that does make sense.
Yeah, my dad's got one of them chargers. A solar array on top would charge it, though. You know what, Menards, they sell like $80 solar panels. I think they're like, they're equivalent to one electrical wall outlet. I mean, this isn't the thing you could power your house with, but like, you know, if you're looking to plug in mm. a couple of devices or something. So you might be able to stick that on the roof and then, you know, lead that in from there um, with yeah. your charger. Because I, I've been seeing, and Menards has been asking they're trying to get people to buy them. I mean, it's not the type that you line your roof with to, to you know, um, power your house, but it's one of those types where, you know, like if you're out on the road and you're in an area where there's a lot of sun and, you know, let's say you're having a picnic and you want to listen to the radio, I mean, it's, it's for that yeah. sort of thing. It's like one outlet's worth of power. Mm -hmm. That's it. Not, nothing grand. A lot of power, but actually, it, it might, it, it, Yeah, but it, might, but it might be enough. Hmm. Well, cool. yeah, one. I mean, one one solar panel will, will will give you that if you got the correct mechanisms on it. But it's just these aren't the type of panels that are, you know, the ones that are made for the roof because that's a that they the ones they make for the roof they make special to be able to go up on on the roof and you know there's a specific type of grid that is used that you go into and battery arrays and so on and so forth. This is just a little tiny like standalone unit. You know, it's not it's nothing grand. Yeah. It's very simple purpose. Cool. I've seen those advertisements. Solar is taking over, and eventually these oil companies are going to get the message that they either work on solar power or they're going to go under. Yeah, as a matter of fact, you know you know why I think, um, you know, and, and you'll see how th this relates, you know about all the, the, the cover-ups about, you know, UFOs and beings from other worlds and things like that? Yeah. Well, I think I think the biggest conspiracy is really right in front of our eyes, that a lot of these races are benevolent, but respect the rights of the planet to operate as it wants to, even if that's dysfunctional. So think about it. Let's say the government's allowed them to land, and all of a sudden we join the galactic community. Well, people are going to have questions like, well, gee, that spaceship of yours, uh, you're going intergalactic here, so obviously you've got the whole power issue beat. And if those races go, oh, yeah, here's a simple power source you could use. It'll do what you need to do. All of a sudden, these, these oil companies are screwed. <laughs> and they're not making their money. Years myself, Dave. I, think, I think that's the biggest thing why they want to cover up all the UFO stuff. Because God forbid that beings from another world come down and start giving the sheeple some ideas. Yeah, oh, yeah, right. just buy these parts at Radio Shack, put them together this way. You would have never thought to put them together that way because it's a quantum science. But if you get follow a toaster, our instructions, get a skateboard and, you, do that, and you know, whatever. But at a D battery, and here you have infinite power. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's just like, okay, well, when you hook the circuitry like up to the batteries. Knockers. Well, yeah, it's just like, here, when you hook the circuitry up this way, you guys aren't paradigm shifted into thinking of doing it that way, but if you do it this way, then it extracts energy from the zero-point field, and you could have all you want. Have fun. Then the oil companies are like, oh, well, fuck. <laughs> well, the thing is with the zero-point field is that it extracts energy from the environment to get there. But that. environment is infinite energy. Can do it, why can't we? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you got to realize that, that space-time and time-space weave around each other and fold inward because time isn't really linear. That's an illusion. So on that inward fold, you've got infinite energy, and you can pull from that. That's really the yeah. only thing you, you wow. could use to... to, to Exactly. But that's really the only thing you can use for, you know, intergalactic travel, you know, something on that magnitude. So just the think Casimir effect the... might do it. Casimir yeah. might might help. I've never I've never heard of that. That's when you've got two plates really close together and there's an attractive force between them. Uh -huh. uh, it's it's some force between them that either re attracts or repels and they're not magnetic. They're not paramagnetic. They just uh, let me look up exactly what it is. I got two computers here. One is slow, one's fast. I'm going to use a slow one because it's got nothing running on it. Uh, 
And after this, I've got to get going. I've got to get a shower and get something to eat and get ready for work. I go to work in the Perfect. morning. And yeah. probably have well, to do some government work tomorrow. Fun. Well, that's, oh, that what is I was the gonna, best part. What I was going to say is because... Um, because um, all of space time is existing at, at one point, so um, location is actually a property of the object, not the other way around, almost like a computer file, like when you see it's on you know C drive, whatever. It's not mm -hmm. really on that. That's just an interface so you can you know where to look for it. It's really all existing just on one hard drive. Um, so space time works the same way. So you just need you would just need enough energy energy to change the property of the object, that being the spacecraft. And you know currently your spacecraft is aligned with the um, resonance frequency of one particular star in one particular point in space time. So if you know the frequency of the location that you're looking to align with, you change the property of the the location property of the ship. So that you're simply here, then you're simply there. And then you don't have to, to waste a lot of fuel and a lot of time and a lot of everything going from star to star to star to star. Imagine it still takes a lot of energy to make that sort of a frequency jump. Okay, uh, Wiki's got Casimir effect. Okay. In quantum field theory, the Casimir effect and the Casimir polar force are physical forces arising from a quantized field. The typical example is of two uncharged metallic plates in a vacuum, like capacitors placed a few micrometers apart, without any external electromagnetic field. In a classical description, the lack of an external field also means that there is no field between the plates and no force would be measured between them. When this field is instead studied using a QED vacuum of quantum electrodynamics, it is seen that the plates do affect the virtual photons which the field and generate a net force, either an attraction or repulsion, depending on the specific arrangements of the two plates. It is indeed a zero-point energy device, but we have no way of actually using it at the moment. Well, the quantum field itself is to separate time and space. It's not all that the illusion, the, illu the illusion of separation, anyway. Yeah, it's the illusion of separation. There is no separation. Technically, we're living in a, what you would call a singularity. Everything. Time. You just string on certain events to give the illusion of time. Time keeps everything from happening at once. Well, it's still an illusion. Illusion doesn't mean fake. Illusion just means that what we think something is isn't actually what it is. It's something else. It's not That's all an illusion time. is. That's for sure. mm -hmm. Yeah, our our senses. It, it, Time is no more than a thing so our sen senses can reg register it in these bodies. Time's a lot well, different yeah. in, in, in different in different places. Well, just like physical reality isn't technically physical, it's already proven that everything is actually wave functions of energy, the same as a television signal, and TVs work just like our eyes our eyes work. That's how they use the neuro-linguistic programming and all that bullshit through the TV because what our eyes are doing are actually taking pure waveform, uh, wave function signal and it's holographic and our eyes are passing it through to our brain which then decrypts the hologram so that we appear to perceive ourselves in this three-dimensional physical reality so that's actually an illusion of the brain. Um, our reality is actually existing in a, in a non-physical um, wave function and the brain is just uh, tricking us so that we can have physical experience because without physical experience, how would you be able to do anything or know anything and the universe would just be real boring. <laughs> Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. And when they discovered this, all the Nazis kind of discovered it first as far as they know, and they go, aha, 
could take this idea called the TV that works the same way, and we could use this to program the sheeple, and we could push our propaganda through it. We could really fuck with people's heads. How about that? And here we are. Well, uh, it's been nice chatting with you guys. I do have to get going. All right, it's been uh, fun chatting with you as well, and I'm um, sure we'll do this again at some point. Yeah, maybe next time somebody will call in. Well, Carolyn called in for a little bit there. But nobody could hear it. Yeah, unfortunately. I, I heard little bits and pieces. Taylor just ended up being being busy. Um, you know, uh, the, the illusion of physical reality called her to other things. So she needed to go. Yeah. But she did, she did enjoy what she was able to hear. Okay. Well, um, I was, I was I'll talk to, to you guys some other time. And Alrighty. I'll make sure these awesome. blueprints are completed in the next few weeks and get them out to machine shops and see what I can do with it. Yeah. And we'll, you know, when you've got your patent, um, you know, I could try getting a hold of Lester Trilla and, you know, no promises on anything, but if we could connect with him and he's well, willing uh, to hear you out. I've I've got the provisional patent already taken out. That means it's mine. Uh, I can put patent pending on drawings and the machine itself. Okay. That means well, I... it really can't be stolen. So I can okay. send this thing out wholesale with uh, uh, do not disclose. Okay. Then um, once you're once you're ready with all that, then um, mm -hmm. we'll do our we'll do our best to hook up with the man and see if he's he's available and willing to uh, you know have an open ear to this and uh, take it yep. from there. All right, fantastic. We'll see what we can do. All right. It's yeah, I'll catch you guys later, and hopefully on Viewer Assisted Radio we can actually get some people to call in and see what we're doing. Awesome. We'll, we'll catch you on type radio again in a few weeks then. Yep. All right. Keep us posted. Okay. Yep. Later. Right, take care, Kevin. Later. See ya. And Kevin has left the building, so to speak. So Jay, you're at the at the helm on this radio stuff here. Um, I'm going. Do we cut it? Do we cut it off? Do we continue? What are we doing here? Uh, we can cut it off at any time. I'm cutting it off right now. Then. All right. Well, our guest is gone, All so right. I just want to say, say goodbye to everybody and thank you for listening.